Hi, I'm Joan Newcomb, and today's Morning Musings is about soulmates. Your soulmate isn't necessarily your soul only mate. For most people, there isn't one person who's destined to be your other half for this lifetime. There is, however, one person who is perfect for you at this moment in time. But look at yourself. Are you happy with who you are, where you're at? Are you satisfied with your life? Would you be attracted to someone who's attracted to you in this present moment? The tricky thing is we keep changing and growing. So if we are with our present soulmate, the challenge is for both people to continue adjusting to each other's growth, to expand along with us. In actuality, we are all soulmates. We are all souls and we're all part of humanity. And as souls, we're infinite and internal. It's the human part of us that's temporary. If you ascribe to the belief of reincarnation, then we're all probably have had a bazillion lifetimes together and therefore a bazillion relationships. If you ascribe to the belief of the collective unconscious, then we're all connected and we're all reflections of each other. So then we all are each other. Any one of us could be your soulmate. Your kid or your mother could be your soulmate just as easily as a partner. People have idealized the concept of soulmate just as they've idealized the concept of unconditional love. Our soulmate is supposed to love us unconditionally. In truth, our soulmate may highly irritate us. We've come together in relationship to learn something from each other and ultimately experience love. However, sometimes we learn the best about something by experiencing its opposite first. Your soulmate could be someone you initially hate. The problem with the concept of unconditional love is that people also think that they have to unconditionally approve of the other person and all the other person's actions. This gets a little tough on a 24-7 basis. A teacher of mine suggested reframing unconditional love as unobstructed love, love unblocked by the judgments and expectations. Release expecting others to behave appropriately, for example. Release expecting that the other person will love you back. <laughs> Release expectations of yourself that you need to be perfect in order to love someone else. It's wonderful when a soulmate comes into our life, completes us, heals us, our past relationship wounds, and patiently stands beside us while we unfold and blossom. But you can't will this to happen. You can't magnetically attract your soulmate by going out and hunting them down. Spiritual rules of manifestation are often the opposite of physical reality. In physical reality, if you want to make something, you chop it down and build it with a lot of sweat equity and physical effort. In spiritual reality, in order to manifest something, you need to tune in with it. Focus on what you want. Ask for it, and then the hardest part of all is to let go and allow it to come to you. Most people report having the soulmate walk into their lives when they finally stopped looking. I have a friend who bought a four bedroom, two bath house on five acres with a lover, and then as the sale closed, the relationship ended. She was stuck alone for five years in this huge place, except for a short period of time when she had the roommate from hell. And finally, she bought herself a one bedroom cabin out in the woods, a perfect hermit's retreat. It had a composting toilet, a loft bed over the living room area, and a postage stamp kitchen. And she fell in love with the man she hired to remodel it. And they're now living in a much larger home in another city. Sometimes people come into your life only for a short part of the journey and are perfect for that moment in time. They're there to help you transition to a new stage of evolution. Or vice versa, sometimes you or your soulmate need half a lifetime's preparation before you can be together for the rest of it. An important step I took in searching for my soulmate was to stop and spend some time concentrating on being my own partner. It was an amazing transition. I got to wear whatever I want. I didn't have to brush my teeth before bed. I even stopped tweezing my eyebrows. I returned to my essential self, who I truly am inside. You can't receive love unless you love yourself. And I'd lost that in my pursuit of love outside of myself. And then the other important part was I noticed my inner narration and I was replaying all the negative things that had happened in relationships in the past. So when I started being able to catch my thoughts 
and reframe them to what I wanted to have. My soulmate came into my life very quickly. And now I'm married to him. It takes staying conscious to retain my essential self while being in partnership with another. It also takes staying conscious in order not to slip into old patterns from previous relationships. It requires staying in the present moment and choosing to respond differently. Manifesting your soulmate is like any other manifestation. Once you've brought them into your life, you now have to maintain the relationship. You wouldn't have a great car and then run it on cheap gas and never put oil on it, would you? Nor would you have the perfect house and never clean it or keep it fixed up. People assume that once they've attracted the perfect partner, they don't have to do anything else. The secret to living happily ever after with your soulmate is to keep up with whatever you were doing to attract them. Even long-term relationships can get back on track with continual small course corrections. Start where you are and do one small thing each day to show your partner that you care about them. Notice what it is that makes them feel loved. Perhaps they appreciate words of affirmation. Maybe they resonate with acts of service. Maybe they appreciate small gifts. One small action leads to another, and in no time, you'll rediscover the soulmate within the person that you married. If you like this video, please like it and share it with others. If you'd like to have a spiritual toolkit for navigating these difficult times, there's a link below to the Skybox technique. And if you want to know more, my website is joan-newcomb.com. And I'll see you in the next Morning Musings.